All right, here we are back again talking about temperature. Uh, we said Fahrenheit uh, set temperatures at zero and 100, which were good in measuring things. There were things that people could measure every day, the temperature of icy salt water, which is zero, and body temperature, which was 100. All right, uh, Celsius started about 10 years later, give or take a little bit. Uh, also used zero and 100, but it was based on the system of water, since water is a very common substance and everyone has it. Uh, zero would be the temperature at which water freezes, which in Europe would not have been a hard thing to do. Um, if they'd been in the tropics, that might have been a hard temperature to reach. Uh, but 100 was the temperature at which water boils, and then they divided that up into 100 units. Okay. Notice that there are more units in the same length of change on the thermometer under Fahrenheit, which means Fahrenheit is more precise. One degree Fahrenheit to the next degree Celsius is a smaller amount of temperature change than one degree Celsius the other. Notice that it does not mean either one of them is more accurate than the other one. Um, and technically, if you um, carried Celsius out to tens and so, it wouldn't even necessarily be more precise. But uh, you can use a thermometer, and there's not like one is more accurate than the other. All right, uh, we can say body temperature is uh, 37 degrees Celsius, or we could say it's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and both are equally correct, okay, and equally accurate if they measured our temperature at that. Uh, they're just two different scales. Now, um, the Celsius is also called centigrade. Centigrade meaning centi mean 100, grade means mark, so there were 0 and 100, and then there were 100 marks between it. So, uh, you don't hear centigrade so much now, mostly it's Celsius. All right. Now, how hot can something get? Well, the point is, basically, temperature is how fast the molecules can move. And there's really no limit on how fast the molecules can move. So the faster the molecules move, they can go faster and faster and faster. And theoretically, the temperature scale would just keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Now, we have a temperature scale that we don't get out of the range of much. But if you're getting into the sun and various things like that, obviously, it just keeps going and going. There is no, as far as we know, no upper limit for temperature. However... Scientists found that there is a lower limit and basically I'm not sure if this drawing really helps But basically what they found is as something cooled one degree The volume changed by one over 273rd. So for example, if this goes down a hundred degrees, then it goes down a hundred to 173rds, okay um, so 1 over 273 for each one. So if you get down to 0, then its volume would just be equal to 1. Okay, if you keep going lower, then it would be less than 1. And finally, if you went down 273 degrees, the volume would be 0. It would get so small that, as we said, as things get smaller, they contract or make less volume, that it would get down to the point that it has no volume. And someone said, well, if that's true, then that would be the lower limit. You can't get any lower than zero volume. In fact, you may not be able to ever get to zero volume. And so uh, we call this absolute zero because uh, we think this is the point at which all motion of the molecules would stop and they would no longer have any volume, which we know is not possible for matter. So uh, we think this is the absolute zero, the very coldest that something could ever get. Okay. And um, basically then we think that it is not something that we can ever reach. It is only something that we can approach or get near to. And they have gotten extremely close to it under uh, control conditions in a small chamber. Uh, they've gotten down to within uh, hundreds or maybe even thousands of absolute zero. But we think it may be impossible to actually get to absolute zero. Now, since we knew absolute zero is the very coldest it could be, someone said, well, the most accurate thermometer then would be one that reflects that. So we came up with a third temperature scale, and this is called Kelvin. Notice that when you read a temperature in Kelvin, it's 310.15 Kelvin, not degrees. And even though I will catch myself saying that from some time, just so have it, I'm always talking about degrees in temperature. Uh, technically, Kelvin is just like meters and other units in the metric system. Uh, they, they decided to just throw the degrees, just put Kelvin. Uh, so just a single thing. It was named for Lord Kelvin, who did a lot of the experiments and so forth, temperature that, that we know about now. So Kelvin is the units. And basically, um, if you were to compare these, 
there period. So zero degrees Kelvin. All right, zero zero Kelvin. Sorry, there it is again. Uh, zero Kelvin is absolute zero, and if you were to translate that into Celsius, it would be negative two hundred and seventy three degrees Celsius okay and so with Celsius you can have negative numbers with Fahrenheit you can have negative numbers but in Kelvin there are no negative numbers and that's one of the advantages of Kelvin most formulas that use temperature will want you to convert it to Kelvin first now uh, other than the fact that it starts really low negative 273 degrees Celsius uh, they a degree Kelvin is equal to a degree Fahrenheit, uh, excuse me, Celsius, Celsius. So if you go from zero Kelvin to one Kelvin, the temperature in Celsius would go from negative 273 to negative 272. Notice it's going up because we're talking about negative numbers. So if it, the, uh, goes down by one that's actually getting closer to zero. So uh, one Kelvin and two Kelvin would be negative 271 degrees Celsius and so on. And so by the time you get up to zero Celsius, you would be at 273 Kelvin. All right. And so one degree Kelvin and one degree Celsius are the same amount of increase in temperature. Okay. Whereas one degree Fahrenheit is a smaller increase in temperature. Now let's compare uh, thermal energy with temperature. A lot of times uh, we get those two things confused. Uh, temperature we said is the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the atom of substance. How fast those molecules are moving. Okay. Um, temperature, uh, that's temperature. Thermal energy has to do with the amount of heat energy that it, an object contains. Okay. And thermal energy involves the temperature, but it also involves the mass or how much there is of a substance, okay? Uh, so for example, a uh, sparkler, if you have a little sparkler at 4th of July, you light and therefore, uh, some of the sparks have a very high temperature, about 2000 degrees Celsius. But there's such small little sparks and particles that if they touch, the sparks hit you, they cool down so quickly, they spread, its heat spreads into you so quickly and it's so small, such a small particle, there's not much thermal energy, okay? Uh, and so the, th the thermal energy that one of those sparks were to hit you would be insignificant, all right? even though they have a high temperature. They actually, it's such a small mass. Uh, so, for example, a, um, if you have a glass of water and you have a swimming pool um, and you go outside in the same day and they're both at air temperature, uh, the, even though they're the same temperature, the swimming pool would have much more thermal energy because there's more of it and it would take more thermal energy to keep it at that temperature. Okay. And whereas a glass of water has a very small mass and so it does not have as much thermal energy uh, to keep it at that temperature. And so uh, thermal energy depends on the kinetic energy, how fast they're moving, which is the same as temperature, but it also depends on the quantity or the number of molecules. The more molecules you have, the more mass, basically, therefore, you are going to have a higher thermal energy. All right. Now, um, heat, on the other hand, is a little bit different also. Heat is when we transfer thermal energy from one object to another. So when heat goes from one object into the next, then that is considered heat. Okay, And um, we a lot of times use the word heat as a, or the same as temperature, but that's not actually correct, okay? And heat is always going to go from objects with higher thermal energy or hotter objects, basically, into cooler objects. Okay, or objects with, um, right. you do not have cold moving into hot objects. For example, if you go outside because, oh, that cold just ate right into my bones, that is technically what's not what's happening. If you go outside, let's just draw a little stick figure here, okay? Your body is 98.7 degrees. If it's substantially 
colder than that outside, then the heat is going from your body. So is your body getting colder? Yes, but it's getting colder because it's losing heat to the atmosphere, okay? Um, and therefore, it always goes from hotter and colder, and it will do that until equilibrium, or the two objects are the same temperature. Now, in a cold day, you're going to constantly then be basically trying to heat up the air until all the air is the same temperature as you are, which is basically not going to happen, and therefore you would get cold enough that you eventually might go into hypothermia or frostbite or something of that effect. On the other hand, during the summer, uh, your body might have to heat up a little bit to uh, reach equilibrium, and you've got to be careful that you, your body will have to try to cool itself off by sweating and and other things or else you may go in and have heat stroke type of thing and so uh, it's going to keep going temperature is going to flow from hot to cold until they both reach the same temperature and basically that's what we're doing with thermometer you stick a uh, thermometer in the water and if the water is colder than the thermometer then the heat goes from the thermometer into the water until it's the same temperature as the water if you put it into hot water then heat moves into the thermometer until they're both the same temperature. And that's why when you stick a thermometer in something, you let it sit there for a minute, and then you read the temperature once it's kind of equalized. Uh, if you do it right away, it might still be changing, and then you, you're going to get the wrong temperature. All right. Uh, talking also then, um, well, we'll talk later more, but if, if you go outside on a cold day, the idea of wearing coat or clothes in general is that the coat traps a layer of air into your body and so your body only has to warm up the air between you and the coat okay and since the coat keeps the air from escaping then you just heat up the air around you and it keeps it the same temperature as you and you don't lose the heat that you would if you did not now wind on the other hand that's just the opposite as you warm this air around you the wind blows that air away so you're constantly getting the warm air moving away from your body it's always cold air next to your body and so you're losing heat much faster and that's why you feel so cold now cold is not something it doesn't really exist cold is just the absence of heat uh, we talk about cold like oh cold is creeping into me or whatever but technically cold is just the absence of heat okay or the absence of thermal energy cold is when there's not heat basically okay just like darkness is when there's no light same kind of general principle uh, cold is simply the absence of heat now when we want to measure the amount of heat in something uh, we use a unit called the calorie okay and everybody's kind of familiar with that we talk about with our food we talk about how many calories we have but there is a difference we'll talk about that here in just a second all right a calorie all right calories are the units that we use to uh, measure heat and basically one calorie is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius all right so calorie is the amount of water needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius now if you keep in mind think of graduate cylinder uh, 100 milliliters of water one of those milliliters one of those little units would be um, one milliliter okay so it would basically be a cube that is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter okay cube whoops didn't do that quite right but okay um that would be uh, a little smaller than a regular dice or die um and so basically it's a very small amount of water now to measure that to make if you were to hold that in your fingers uh, do you think it would go up one degree fairly quickly yes it would go up very quickly and so this is a fairly small amount of heat very small amount of heat and so when we started measuring the amount of energy in food, well, let's talk about that on the next one. All right, see you in a little bit.